So if you think about it, long COVID affects the brain and the body. Chronic fatigue syndrome affects the brain and the body. Fibromyalgia certainly affects the brain and the body. And they all kind of cause the same problems within the body. Now, the cause is different. How you got chronic fatigue syndrome or how you got long COVID or fibromyalgia or POTS is different for every individual. Nine times out of 10, it's a combination of things. From the simplest standpoint, what I do know is that like it literally affects every aspect of of your brain and body and your life, which no one, people don't talk about this enough. It affects your entire life. It affects your emotional well being. It affects your physical well being. It affects your spiritual well being too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode at the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. I am your host, Toby Morrison, the founder of CFS Health. And on the other end, we've got a special guest, it's Ash Ward. She's the general manager of CFS Health. She's the mama bear of CFS Health. And most of you know who she is. You might have seen her on a a recent podcast, or if you're a member, you know who she is. But for those of you who don't know Ash, she basically runs the entire operation of CFS Health, the CFS Health Recovery Program, Mentorship 3.0. She deals with the members day to day. She gets an insight to all the people around the world who inquire and reach out for help. And so uh, she's got a brilliant, brilliant insight into, you know, what people with chronic fatigue syndrome and other associated illnesses struggle with every single day. So welcome, Ash. Hi, everybody. So nice to be here. <laughs> Always. We're going to do a another Q&A today. So uh, Ash is going to pick out a specific question that a person from the internet has asked. And I'm going to put on 15 minutes on the clock and I'm going to do my very best to answer uh, a question within that time. What's the question, Ash? The question is another very common one. Do different illnesses require a different approach to recovery? Okay. Do different illnesses require Require a different approach to recovery? All right. I'm going to put my 15 minute timer on. Just a quick reference. It's 15 minutes. Okay. I'm going to do the best I can to answer this question. 15 minutes is not enough time to give it the respect and the true, you know, full answer within that time. But I'm going to do my very best to to give you my my honest answer and my experience of working with people for over 15 years now to this answer. So please give me some grace. You know, this is a conversation we could have for three hours, but I want to give you the most practical help I possibly can within the 15 minutes. Three, two, one, 15 minutes is now on. Just read out the question once more, Ash. Do different illnesses require a different approach to recovery? So obviously we talk about chronic fatigue syndrome a lot, but we have lots of people experiencing long COVID, fibromyalgia, POTS, post-viral fatigue, the list can continue. So how, you know, is there a different approach to these different illnesses when it comes to recovery? Great. I've got a really good story to tell. I'm going to give you the answer up front and I'm going to break it down for you. The approach is exactly the same in across the board for a specific set of associated illnesses similar to chronic fatigue syndrome. So we're talking things of long COVID, fibromyalgia, POTS, post-viral fatigue, things of that nature. Okay. Why am I saying that? Because I've seen it literally thousands of times over the last 15 years. Now, I'll break it down for you so you can actually understand what I'm talking about. It's not as simple as just like, oh, so the same things work for everyone? No, I'm not saying that, right? Recovery requires an individual process based off the individual, right? Everyone everyone starts recovery at different times in their life. There is a lot of moving factors, Maybe some people with chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID, maybe some of some of these people already have their nutrition and their sleep dialed in, right? That's not a problem for them. Maybe some people's mindsets are awesome, but they have no idea how to stop pushing and crashing. And they just keep going around in circles and exerting themselves way too much and basically spending all their energy credits and having none left for later. What I've found is that all of these illnesses cause the same problem, right? In the sense that it affects their brain, it affects their body. When I say it affects your brain, it affects your nervous system, it affects how you think, it affects your memory, it affects your cognitive load, 
it affects all of that, right? Then it affects your body, which is what we would call symptoms, right? Physical symptoms, physical capacity. It really limits you in that way. And so if you think about it, long COVID affects the brain and the body. Chronic fatigue syndrome affects the brain and the body. Fibromyalgia certainly affects the brain and the body, right? And they all kind of cause the same problems within the body. Now, the cause is different, right? How you got chronic fatigue syndrome or how you got long COVID or fibromyalgia or POTS is different for every individual, right? Nine times out of 10, it's a combination of things. From the simplest standpoint, what I do know is that like, it literally affects every aspect of your brain and body and your life, which no one, people don't talk about this enough. It affects your entire life. It affects your emotional well-being. It affects your physical well-being. It affects your spiritual well-being too. And so if you think about that for a second, don't you think that the, the smartest, most logical way to fix this problem is to basically do the reverse of what the problem has created, right? This is how I started this whole recovery process almost 20 years ago because I went through it myself. But like when I, when I joined the dots, once I recovered and I started writing my book and I started helping people one-on-one, I was joining the dots and I was like, well, this works and that works and this works and that doesn't work. So I'm going to stop doing that and figure something else out. And what I realized from this whole process, all I was doing was reversing what the condition had done to me, right? So one of the big things that happens is the deconditioning of muscle, muscle mass in the body, right? Now, we know muscle stores more energy than fat. And in the sense that a person who has more muscle has more energy in their system, right? And... One of the things with deconditioned muscles is basically it affects your entire strength and capacity overall. So one of the things that we we teach and we help people is, is we help them build their strength and stamina appropriately for where they're at. And then we help them recondition their body appropriately so that over time they literally progress and their body gets stronger. What does that do? Well, it actually, one, it helps them gain muscle mass. And I'm not talking about like bodybuilder muscle mass. I'm just talking about general like pub population muscle mass of reconditioning your body. Like when you look in the mirror and you go, oh, like there's my bicep or there's my, my shoulders uh, or my posture is good or my chest is stronger, my back is stronger. But what that then enables you to do is basically go and live life, you know, like perform daily tasks, become more functional around the house, you know, do the laundry, do the chores. And it's funny because like when people start getting better from, you know, whether it's chronic fatigue syndrome or fibro or whatever, one of the things that we see with our clients is like as they get better and they 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 can go and do the dishes and they can go and do the chores and they actually enjoy it. They're like, oh my God, I'm so grateful that I got to put the washing out today and I feel totally fine or whatever it is, you know, because they can. And this is just one aspect of recovery think about fibromyalgia especially chronic pain real hard one one of the hardest things with chronic pain is sleep because you're in pain all the time that your your brain can't shut off from the pain and so sleep is a vicious problem that is like reoccurring and so again that's why we have such a holistic comprehensive approach and why the process is the same for all illnesses yet you have to do different things at different times of recovery is because it affects the same aspects of your life and your brain and your body. So we we would fix your sleep, right? Which doesn't happen overnight. But for someone who's got chronic pain, uh, fixing their sleep is going to help reduce inflammation, right? And then that will then help them have more energy when there's less inflammation because the energy is getting used up from the healing process. And it's not rocket science, like it's actually really simple, but it's just, it, it's so complicated because it's, because this illness is complicated because it has so many facets, you know, gut health is, a, is another one, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome and other associated illnesses really can affect your gut health. And so that's another aspect that we need to reverse engineer. So the way I look at it, and I simplify that, especially when I started working with people with chronic fatigue syndrome and other associated illnesses, you know, 15 years ago, the way I did it so simply and elegantly was this to go, okay, well, this person's got this problem, that problem, that problem. Well, what's the opposite of that? And how can we start doing it? 
And the problem is the reason why help is so far and few between in the world is because most people don't understand it, right? And so, yes, there's some practitioners out in the world and they're suggesting some things, but it has to be more nuanced than general advice. The problem is you've been told just sleep more, eat better, move more, go for a walk. And it's like, how do I do that, doctor, when I don't even freaking know how, how, like how to sleep? My sleep's so out of whack that I'm, you know, nighttime's morning and morning's nighttime. That's what my brain's telling me. How do I know what to eat? You know, doctor, last time I went for a walk, I felt like crap for five days. So what do I do? And so really what we do at Cephas Health is we break it down into more nuanced steps based off the individual's capacity and level of health, and then we build from there. And the great thing is, you know, we have a thing called the self-help evaluation assessment inside our program. And it basically teaches each member once they go through the scorecard, it tells them what to focus on based off their score. And this is why it's important. Like a blanket approach isn't a good approach because, you know, you're at home and you probably don't need to do half the things that you've been told to do. You just need to do the one or two specific things right now that are going to help you progress further and once you then make progress then you need to redo that self-help evaluation assessment and go okay what's next i've got my baseline right i've stopped pushing and crashing my nutrition my gut health better i'm pooing better i'm sleeping naturally better i'm waking up more naturally maybe my symptoms are starting to decrease a little bit but here's the kicker of all of this thing and hopefully you're still with me because i'm you know it's, it's hard to fully conceptualize everything i'm talking about here's how simple it is as your health improves your illness decreases right so so think about this does a healthy person experience symptoms does a healthy brain and a healthy body suffer daily it doesn't it can't health with when health is present illness isn't and so if you think about it and i say this all the time as you get healthier and i point upwards your, de- your symptoms decrease and they go down. And it takes it takes people a while to understand that. But the greatest thing is, and we see this all the time, and it, and it usually doesn't happen for the first little while. But if you can get enough consistency under your belt for like three months, like members notice a difference. They're like, holy shit, like I, my brain fog's nowhere near as bad as what it was. My leg pain is non-existent now unless I push myself beyond my capacity or my current baseline. But what's hard is like you don't even realize that they're going away. It's just that you're just creating more new challenges because you're getting better. So you're having to expand your level of progress to more things, which which feels challenging, but it's not as challenging as having symptoms that you had three months ago that were literally consuming your life. A perfect example of this is most clients, as they start to get better, there's a level of boredom that comes in and, and, and it's a real problem. Like, it's like, oh my God, I'm just so bored. Like, I don't know what to do. And I'll say, great. I said, for most of the part, if it's the boredom that I'm thinking that it is, it means that you've got more time and more energy that you haven't filled it up with yet. You, three months ago, were too sick to be bored. You were consumed with your symptoms and your suffering so much, like it was so debilitating that you didn't have time to feel bored, like you were consumed. So boredom, provided that you're doing the right things at the right time, can actually be a fantastic sign of progress because there's actually time and energy without the symptoms of suffering, right? Does that make sense, Ash? Am I kind of, yeah? Yeah, makes total sense. And a perfect example, I'll finish with this because we've got two minutes and 45 seconds to go. Let me take a glass of water, actually. This is a good story. Spoke spoke to this lady the other day, actually, which is pretty crazy. So there's a lady called Michelle. I reckon it was about 11, 10 years ago now, maybe 11 years. This lady from Oregon, Portland, USA, joined a webinar. It was a free webinar. It was like an hour long and it was just sharing some information about recovery. This lady, Michelle, types into the chat and she goes... It's not possible for me. That's all she said. And I don't know why, but I just 
started talking to her in front of everyone. I was just like, I was like, I just picked her and I was like, let's just have a chat about this. And she wrote, I'm a, I'm about to give up. Um, and she wrote that. And I said, you know, there's a lot of pressure when you get a comment like that, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to see that kind of conversation. And I said, listen, Michelle, I said, I don't know you. And I can't, I can't change how you feel. Like I can't, whatever I say doesn't really matter that much. Like it's, I can't tell you not to give up. It's not, not really my job. But what I can tell you is that recovery is possible. And she said, but Toby, I have multiple illnesses. And I said, okay. And, and then she asked the biggest question, the hardest question to answer, which was, will this work for me? (laughs) And as you've seen, you know, people people ask this question all the time. But but will it work for me though? You know, like, yeah, I know it works for other people and like all these success stories and all these people getting better and da-da-da-da-da. That doesn't, it's irrelevant. Like, is this actually going to work for me? Because I'm different, right? And to be fair, in Michelle's case, like she was very different in the sense that she'd been suffering for over a decade, right? And there's this myth out there that if you've had it for long or if you're older in the older demographic, you can't get better, which is total a total lie, by the way. We've seen people in their 60s, 70s and 80s get better. So that that disrupts that myth. But second of all, Michelle actually had like 10 lots of diagnoses. And what was crazy was she actually wrote them out in the chat. And, and we got on the, she was on unmute. So she was talking in front of all the other hundreds of people on the webinar while we were, we were going back and forth. And she said, is this going to work for me? Cause I suffer with this. I suffer with that. I suffer with this. I suffer with uh, this, this and that. And some of them that I knew like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, things of that nature, but there was like five or six illnesses, diagnosis that I'd actually never heard of before. And she actually had two pages worth of medical conditions, Ash, like it was like, it was huge. And, you know, that's a loaded question to ask someone to say, well, is this going to work for me? You know, and you know what I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't like people who just like are the gurus and like, yeah, like just work with me and it's going to change your life. You know, like that's just, that's bullshit. You know, there's too much of that out there already. So anyway, it was a loaded question and I'm on the spot. There's hundreds of people on this webinar. And I said, Michelle, can I ask you a couple of questions? And she said, sure. And at the time she was so gray. She was like, like I said, she was at the brink. She would just, she wanted to give up basically. And I said, to answer your question, I can't guarantee anything. All right. I don't know half these illnesses. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never heard of their names. They were so complex. Like some of them were super complicated diagnoses. And I said, but I want to ask you a couple of questions. And I think this will help figure out whether or not it's going to be useful for you. And I said, what, what do you struggle with? And she said, my sleep's terrible. My capacity's terrible. My deconditioning's terrible. My mindset's terrible. I feel like giving up all the time. My gut health's no good. My symptoms are horrible. So you can see where like all the natural things that everyone else experiences, she was experiencing. And I said, okay, I said, if we reverse engineer this just for a second, would it be useful if you worked on your sleep? And she's like, yeah, I guess so. And I said, well, would it be harmful? And she said, well, no, you know, American, no, Toby, you know, American voice. Okay. I said, if we worked on your mindset and we stopped feeling so sorry for ourselves and feeling so low all the time. And if you had some some sense of, of contentment and a different feeling in your body and your mind, would that be useful? Well, yeah, of course, Toby. And I said, well, would it be bad if you did worked on that? Would it be a bad thing? She said, no, of course not. I was like, okay, cool. I said, if we helped you with your nutrition, we leveled out your blood sugar, sugar levels, we got more energy into your system, we reconditioned your body, or at least we started working on it, would that be harmful? And she said, no. And I was like, and if we had a a baseline that was appropriate for you and we progressed it appropriately over time, would that be harmful for you? Like, would it, is it dangerous? Would it be bad? And she said, no. And I said, well, Michelle, I can't answer the, I can't tell you a yes or no answer. Is this program going to, you know, change your life and get you better? That's something that I can't answer. What I can say is that if you do this stuff, it's certainly not going to help you. Yeah, so it's not certainly not going to uh, hurt you, right? And it can only 
have one benefit, which would potentially might help you with your health. And as you get healthier and as you get stronger, your symptoms will decrease. Does that make sense? As your immune system goes up, your illness and your colds and your flus go down. Like all of this stuff happens when you do the right things at the right time. Anyway, the craziest thing happened is she actually joined the program off that call. This is when you were back in the day when you were allowed to do that. Now we have a much better process now. You know, our program is completely different compared to what it was back then. But but what was crazy is Michelle for the first two weeks, she was real bad. Like I'm talking like could go to the toilet once a day and that was it. Her 80-year-old mother was caring for her, right? Can you imagine that? Pretty wild. Within two months, she jumped on another call and I was looking at a different person. I was looking at a person that was shining her light, like her skin was glowing. This lady's smile was from ear to ear. The energy coming out of this lady's mouth was so much better. And I said, hold on a second. Is this Michelle? And she's like, yeah, it's me. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, what have you done? Because you look different. Like, you literally look different. She said, well, Toby, I've been working on my baseline. I'm doing my nutrition. I'm sticking to exactly what's working. And she didn't do anything miraculous. And she wasn't 100% better, by the way. Like she actually, she'd only just improved a little bit in that first two months. But like from going from like about to give up, freaking 10 plus multiple diagnoses that I'd never heard of, thinking that she couldn't improve her health to then literally taking charge of her health and noticing the benefits of that. She went from not being able to basically get out of her bedroom. Within two months, she was walking downstairs and upstairs, which was huge after 10 years of not being able to do that. She was able to eat meals with her mother downstairs instead of them them being brought up to her bed every day. She went from not being able to go outside to being able to walk around the garden every single day within six months. And within, sorry, within nine months, she was able to go to her local beach at Oregon and put her feet in the sand which she hadn't done in almost 10 years. Pretty crazy. 12 months later, she was able to drive seven hours on her own to catch up with her best friend that she hadn't seen in 20 years. And it's so funny because I I don't really go through the Instagram. We've got Instagram and I never go through the messages because our team run it. But literally, Ash, I didn't even tell you. Two weeks ago, I was just going through it for some reason. I felt like, oh, I just want to check in on something. Michelle messaged I haven't spoken to her in years we popped up on her feed and she messaged like oh my god Toby uh, it's so good to see you and your work and what you're doing anyway I told her to reach out to you so we can get her on a podcast because her story is insane and so she's she's doing really great and she's super keen to come on the podcast but yeah I wanted to share that story because like she defied all odds she's probably the perfect example of someone who who is speaking to this question because I think it's so easy to separate ourselves from possibility. We think that we're different, we're unique, and you might be. You might be different and you might be unique and would it be harmful to work on your health? Because the way I look at it is this isn't a recovery program, this is a life program. And we've had so many people who have come through this program who have said, oh my God, this would be so fantastic for this problem and for this problem and for this problem, which has got nothing to do with CFS or any associated illness. In fact, we had a a person who had chronic fatigue syndrome and dealt with cancer. And she said that Toby, like, God, if I had this program when I was going through cancer, it would have been a game changer. And so I think really the key takeaway here is focus on holistic health. Focus on not just one thing, but all aspects of your health and well-being. And remember, really what we're doing here is reverse engineering the damage that chronic fatigue syndrome or your specific illness has done to your mind, body, and spirit. And we just need to take that approach to reverse engineer whatever the problem has been and basically fix it. And that's an inside out approach. And yeah, we've just seen it work, work time and time again. So yeah, don't get too fixated on labels. That's my suggestion. It's so easy to, but I'm telling you, like the people that don't get fixated on their labels, like Michelle, eventually after 10 years of of, of doing so, was able to go out the other end and, and get her life back. And we are two and a half minutes over time, Ash. I'm sorry. Well, 
It was very, very well articulated, Toby. I will add something in that there's, there's some commonalities that we see with the people who have recovered. And I would mm. say one of them is that they all have solid foundations in their health, mm-hmm. regardless of if it was chronic fatigue syndrome, regardless of if it's long COVID, regardless of if it's POTS, post-viral fatigue, fibromyalgia. But there's the commonalities are strong foundations with their health. And that list would go on, like you said, working on your health, getting those solid, solid foundations. It's just, it's just hard. Like I said, it's just hard because it has to be nuanced. Like with chronic, like any illness, like you have to have a nuanced approach with the health approach, if that makes sense. Because it's like Mm. just drinking more water and eating healthier food and all that jazz. Like it's not, it's not specific enough for an individual who needs more specific specificities with where they're at. And so the way we break it down is we have stages of recovery and there's three acute stage of suffering, the re-strengthened stage and the reconditioned stage. And then there's the lifestyle reintegration stage. And so depending on where you're at on the stage is going to be dependent on what you'll do in that period of time, which will then help you go to the next level basically. So this is methodical, you know, it's done over time and there's progression steps to it. And I think that's just what, you know, I think that's what trips people up the most is that they don't have a a step-by-step plan with that and they're just kind of literally just guessing all the time and it's just like Mm. there's no real method. It's just madness basically. So I hope this inspires a lot of you out there who who have maybe tried all the different approaches that you've tried. It's exhausting. Just like Michelle, she was absolutely exhausted by that point. She tried everything in her mind. And I would just like ask you the question, like, is what you're doing useful? You know, maybe it's time to stop doing what you're doing. Maybe it's time to stop going down these rabbit holes of trying the next fad or buying the next gadget. You know, I just see this all the time. And it's just like, it's like, no, what are you doing? Don't do that. I've seen like, it's not, the amount of questions I see that come through our pages of people who aren't getting our help, like general public, and they're like, will this gadget help me with my symptoms? Will this this supplement, someone told me about it. It's like, geez, you, you still don't get it. Like it's, you're going to spend more time, more money on shit that doesn't move the needle to really where it can go. And again, it's not their fault. The culture says, here, sick, take this tablet. Here, you're sick, do this thing. Here, you're sick, buy this gadget. And so, you know, if you're, if you're at home, it's not your fault. You know, we all go through it. You know, I know when I was going through recovery almost two decades ago, my parents and my family, we went through this, that period because it's like, that's what you think you should do. No one teaches you the art of health and the art of healing. And, you know, we're doing, we're, we're doing our best to do that job around the world right now. So hopefully this helps and get you, get you on the right track. Yeah. Thanks, Ash. Speak to you soon. Hey, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. What was your takeaway, your insight from today's video? It's really helpful to actually write your learnings down. We seem to embed it better and it seems to help us move forwards with life. Here are three ways we can help you right now whenever you're ready. The first way is make sure you add yourself into our free information recovery group on Facebook. We'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really supportive, encouraging place. There's no negative venting. You can ask questions to other people. There's something like seven, 8,000 people in there right now. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, there's even more. So go over there right now. We share success stories. We share our latest free trainings that come to the public. And we always share upcoming information about upgrades inside our program. And also when we offer free webinars or free information nights that can further help you with your own recovery. The second way we can help you, which is one of my favorite, is through all our free trainings. We're going to leave a link in the description with our favorite free trainings that we know can help you start your recovery, whether that's through our baseline training, which will help you stop pushing and crashing, our three stages of recovery to figure out exactly where you're at and know what to do next, or my favorite, which is our guest panel workshop, which was actually exclusive for our members. It was so 
damn good that I actually asked them, can we share this to the public? They all said yes, all five of them. So thank you past members. They share their five recovery secrets and it's really powerful. There's tears, there's aha moments, there's real key insight and inspiration. And so whether you're a one out of 10 and you're really struggling right now, or whether you're further along in your recovery journey and you're integrating back into life, we have you covered. The third way we can help you is through our actual paid online recovery program, the mentorship recovery program. And if you are interested in getting proper help, a holistic comprehensive plan, professional coaching from the best coaches in the world, whether that's with mindset, movement, nutrition, restorative movement, reconditioning, integrating back into life, integrative medicine, baseline, structure, routine, accountability, all things health and life. Feel free to apply for the program today. All you need to do is click on the form, cfshealth.com slash form, fill out the short two to three minute form application, and the team will be in touch with all the details that you need to know about the program via email. So make sure you check your spam folder for all the free trainings. If you've sent through an application, please be patient. My team are real people, okay? They're not robots. So if we don't get back to you within seconds or hours, it's okay. <laughs> we will get back to you. If you don't hear from the team within two to three days, that means that it's basically gone to spam or junk and it's gone missing. So please send a follow-up email to the team at info at cfshealth.com. If you have any questions, go check it out. But I would highly recommend adding yourself into the free group right now. Go click on that link in the description. Go download all the free trainings. Honestly, the whole reason why this whole thing started is because when I went through this myself, it was so painful and so excruciating that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. And some of these free trainings are so damn valuable. Back then, I would have paid thousands of dollars for. We've had so many comments and emails and posts saying, oh my God, the baseline training was a game changer for me. Toby, I've been doing this now for three months and I'm feeling so much better. My symptoms are decreasing. I've got more stamina. I've got more energy. I'm able to do more things. So, you know, whether you're learning from us and consuming our content through our free format, I'm so stoked. Whether that's in our paid program, I don't really care. Either way, all I want to make sure is that you are moving forwards. You are starting to really implement this work. And that's really what it's all about. Once we implement, we make change and we start to move forwards. Sending you a ton of love. Of course, feel free to consume as much of the YouTube videos as you like. There's so many really, really great ones, new and old. Sending you a ton of love and uh, speak to you very, very soon. All the best for now.